13-week theater is supported by Patreon. Subscribe now and get exclusive early access. Starting in 1977, ABC dominated Tuesday nights with a lineup that, except for a couple of experiments and summer replacements, consisted of Happy Days at 8, Laverne and Shirley at 8.30, and Three's Company at 9. But by 1982, it was starting to fall apart. First, Cindy Williams left Laverne and Shirley after being denied maternity leave. The show limped on without Shirley, and apparently half of the supporting cast, before finally being cancelled. Then adding to ABC's misery, in January of 1983, NBC launched a little action comedy you might have heard of. If you have a problem that no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire the A-Team. The A-Team ate into Happy Days and Laverne and Shirley's ratings in the 8 o'clock hour, becoming a surprise hit. ABC realized they needed to do something, anything, to save Tuesday nights. They found their inspiration in a classic format. Producer Lawrence Gordon was riding a wave of success in the late 70s and early 80s, and along with his younger brother Charles, had started work on a modern television adaptation of Aladdin. ABC were intrigued with the idea, but they were more interested in one of Gordon's other projects. 1982's 48 Hours made a movie star of Eddie Murphy kick-started the buddy cop genre and continued producer Gordon's winning streak. Needing a show that could compete with the A-Team, ABC asked if the duo could pull off Aladdin, quote, but hip, like Eddie Murphy. Comedian T.K. Carter had been building a resume with roles on shows like The Waltons, Good Times, and The Jeffersons. The Gordons decided to give him a chance to shine with his first leading role in the sitcom, playing Shabu, a 3,000-year-old genie who claimed to have served historical figures like Cleopatra and Napoleon. Shabu is freed when the lamp he's imprisoned in is knocked over at a flea sale by TV weatherman Keith Burrows, played by veteran failed TV show actor Richard Gillibrand. Since Keith had released him, Shabu was bound to be his servant for 2,000 years or his death, whichever came first. All these favorite ABC shows will be back again this fall. That's only the beginning. Plus, eight great new ones, like Just Our Luck. Meet Keith Burrows. Boring. TV weatherman down on his luck. When they're passing out charisma, you were in the men's room. What Keith needs is a major break. And just his luck, he gets much more than he bargained for. I must be seeing things. I'm cracking up. But Keith doesn't know a good thing when he sees it. At your service, Master, I am Shabu, and I am here to serve you for the next 2,000 years, or until your death, which one ever comes first. Now, I'm going to do something that I don't normally do. I'm going to audition. Go ahead. You're not here anyway. <laughs> yeah! I don't Shabu's a real class act, and he knows all the tricks. But I do know that I love you. It's all yours, man. With me, anything's possible. Where's my stuff? Say, man, I just make stuff disappear. I don't ask where it goes. Keith, check this out. This one doesn't even need a secret code. Dig it. Hey, give me some money. Hey, give me some money. Living with a genie definitely has its rewards. This is what television is all about. Just our luck. Just Our Luck was created by two white men, written by an all-white writing team, and had an all-white cast except for Carter, whose character had a white man as his master. You do see where this is going, don't you? Now these are my kind of people. Megan and Nelson's kind of people. The beautiful people. Hey, 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 don't mess with those. Those are for the party. Whoa, you guys even too hip for me. My life was all in order. They tossed a hand grenade. I thought I might be dreaming, but you didn't fade. I thought if I ignored you, maybe you just might go. Is it? It's 
Almost unanimously bad. Richard Corliss from Time called the show hip underplayed farce. Mother Jones's Catherine Olney called the show a new Amos and Andy, and the NAACP organized a nationwide boycott of ABC over the show. The network eventually caved, agreeing to hire black writers, refrained from using the words master and servant and casting a second black actor, Leonard Simon, as anchorman Jim Dexter. But the damage was done. The ratings were bad, and the show couldn't escape its reputation. ABC canceled Just Our Luck on December 27th. Unexpectedly, ABC also canceled Happy Days at the same time, choosing to burn off the show's final episodes in the summer. To fill the gap on the schedule, ABC turned to foul-ups, bleeps, and blunders, and a Norman Lear-created vehicle for Paul Rodriguez. Uh, but that's another story. Is it, it just our love? 